George, uh, thank you so much for that terrific introduction. Thank you for the uh, plug for my Zero to One book. Uh, um, certainly any uh, additional royalty checks are very much appreciated. Uh, and so thank you for that plug. I am, uh, you know, in my brief uh, comments here, I'm going to offer uh, three contrarian ideas for the future where, you know, where things are going with uh, technology and computers. And I thought I would try to double um, these three ideas up as a, as a sort of uh, book review of a uh, Gilder's terrific uh, book, uh, um, Life After Google. And so I'm going to give you three contrarian ideas, but I'm going to weave in a little bit of a book review of, uh, um, uh, of, the, of uh, Life After Google as well. Um, you know, one of the things that's always difficult about talking about the future is that, uh, you know, we don't, don't really know what's going to happen for sure. It's not that deterministic. Um, I think it's even hard to talk to know what happened in the past. So let, let's start by talking about the history of the computer age and the, the history of the future, the way people talked about the future in the past and the way they thought, where was the computer age going to go? And if we were, if we'd been assembled in 1969, the future of computers was going to be massive centralization. It was giant databases, uh, giant uh, AI-like computer intelligences that would run everything. Uh, it was like IBM, it was um, HAL transposed in the Space Odyssey uh, movie, um, one letter off from IBM. Uh, it was uh, one of the early Star Trek episodes, they, they come to the planet Beta, which uh, thousands of years earlier had been, um, somebody had unified the planet and left a computer program that ran the whole planet. And all the people were sort of uh, peaceful, but very docile, nothing ever happened. Um, and, um, and as usual, they sort of follow the prime directive and, um, convince the computer to self-destruct. They don't follow the prime directive and, and then sort of leave everything in disarray. But, uh, but the future of the computer age circa 1969 was centralization, a few large companies, a few large governments, uh, a few large computers that controlled everything. Fast forward to 1999, um, the future of the computer age was going to be massive decentralization. It was sort of libertarian, anarchist. Uh, it was uh, sort of the corollary to the end of the Soviet Union was that information had this decentralizing um, tendency and, um, and, uh, and that, you know, the internet was going to fragment things um, and it was going to be uh, this sort of anarchic libertarian place. And if, if uh, and then, um, and then if we uh, fast forward to 2019, the consensus view of the future today, I would submit, is that the pendulum has somehow swung back all the way to 1969. And the consensus view is, again, that uh, it is about, um, you know, large centralization, um, Google, Google-like governments that, uh, that sort of control, you know, all the world's information in this uh, super centralized uh, kind of way. And, uh, and I think the, you know, the, the life after Google thesis that, uh, that I agree with and endorse is that uh, if we look at this past and people got it terribly wrong in 69 and things were going to go to decentralized in 99, it, it, it actually started going back the other way. From the point of view of 2019, even if we, uh, even if I'm hesitant to talk about the absolute future and, you know, where this all ends ultimately, um, perhaps the contrarian thing is to say that maybe the pendulum can swing back and that things can swing back towards more decentralization, um, more privacy, uh, uh, and, and things, things like that. And, uh, and this is sort of, uh, this is sort of what, what seems to be at least contrarian and, uh, at least, uh, something that we should, uh, we should, uh, always take more, more seriously. If you, um, if you want to frame it in terms of the buzzwords of the day, in terms of crypto and AI, um, it is, um, it is easily understood by people. It's always understood that crypto is somehow vaguely libertarian, but um, we never are willing to say the opposite, uh, which is that AI, if, you know, if crypto is libertarian, then AI is communist. And, um, and you know, it's, it's because it's centralized, it's the computer knows more about you than you know about yourself. It is, uh, it is uh, totalitarian. Communist China loves AI and dislikes crypto. Um, and, um, and, um, and, uh, and that, uh, and that we at least have uh, that we should at least uh, consider the possibility that uh, you know Silicon Valley is probably way too enamored of AI, not just for technological reasons, but also because it expresses this uh, this sort of 
left-wing centralized zeitgeist. And, 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 then, and so I think the, uh, the, the first sort of contrarian idea I have is that you know, perhaps it's time for the pendulum to swing back and life after Google um, you know, at its core means that we are going to go back from this very centralized uh, uh, world today towards a, a more uh, decentralized one. And that seems to me to be, be the correct thing to bet on. <clears throat> now, the, you know, the second um, contrarian idea that uh, is, of course, um, we can sort of talk about how fast these things are happening and how much is happening in technology generally. And, you know, it's, it's one of these things where we, we live in a world of incredible scientific and technical precision. We can measure Avogadro's number or the fine structure constant in physics or other things like this to, to many, many significant figures. But when we talk about um, the nature of the progress of science and technology um, and how fast science or technology are progressing, uh, we do this in the most qualitative way with, um, you know, with incredibly little precision. And, um, you know, are we, are we accelerating in scientific and technical fields? Are we um, are we progressing, but at a slower pace? How fast is this? And uh, and with respect to that question, we tend to only get um, these sort of um, fairly vague answers. And I would say, but I would submit that the sort of consensus in um, in sort of a both a Silicon Valley and a sort of academic context is that we are doing great and everything is just moving super fast. It's sort of uh, all these forms of accelerationism. And we can debate whether it's utopian, a la Kurzweil, the singularity is near. All you need to do is sit back and eat some popcorn and watch the movie of the future unfold. Um, or perhaps it is dystopian, a la all the science fiction movies from Hollywood, and the robots are going to kill you or you're going to be in this matrix. And we're sort of accelerating. We're sort of accelerating to utopia or accelerating to dystopia. And, uh, the, you know, the somewhat contrarian thesis I have on this is always that uh, – Perhaps uh, the progress is not as fast as advertised and uh, that we've been in this world where uh, things have been slower and they've been slower for quite some time. Um, you know, one one cut on this is always to differentiate the world of atoms and bits and that uh, since the 1970s, we've had a narrow cone of progress around atoms that they've been sorry, around bits, the you know computers, Internet, mobile Internet software. These have been advancing fairly quickly. Uh, the world of atoms somewhat more slowly. When you know, when I was an undergraduate at uh, at, at Stanford, um, I, I would, in the late eighties, uh, I would say that almost every engineering field, in retrospect, was a bad field to go into. It was already obvious that you shouldn't go into nuclear engineering. Aero astro engineering weren't, weren't that good. But even all these other fields were were not going to do that well in the decades ahead because we were you know, electrical engineering was still okay. Uh, computer science was the really good field to go into in, in the late 80s. All the other engineering fields, it was just regulated to death. There wasn't that much you could do in the world of atoms. And uh, it turned out that we had, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, slowed process, progress. And I, I think that if we sort of analyze this question of the uh, the rate of scientific progress politically and think of it as, um, as sort of um, university professors or entrepreneurs or venture capitalists, um, um, exaggerating about how much good they're doing and how great they are, we understand that the incentives are always to exaggerate and to uh, to you know, say that you know we're we're just around the corner from curing cancer, we're around the corner in you know, all these different things, and yet uh, it's been uh, it's been in some significant way slower over the last uh, last forty or fifty years. <coughs> uh, certainly, uh, one of the one of the concerns I would have is that um, um, that perhaps. Um, the, the danger is that, if anything, that it's things are slowing down even more at this point, and that um, the sort of world of very fast progress in bits is actually starting to slow down. Um, and if we look at um, at the rate of progress in uh, in Silicon Valley, um, you know, the, it was sort of charismatic in this because it was the one place where things were still happening relative to the rest of the U.S. And uh, and it's become a lot less charismatic in the last five years. If you sort of think about the the, the vibe in twenty four, even as recently as twenty fourteen, it was sort of um, this was the place where the future was being built. In twenty nineteen, um, you know, the big tech companies are probably as uh, as self hating in some ways as uh, as the big banks were in two thousand nine. And um, and uh, there's sort of a sense that it's. Uh, it's not quite working, and so if you sort of begin to pick on Google a little bit here, the you know the Google propaganda of the future was, of course, was all going to be bits, 
It was all going to be sort of more automation. You know, the story in 2014 were things like Google Glasses. So you could um, identify anybody you looked at at any time. It was the self-driving car. I would say these aren't like that big in a set of innovations. Probably a self-driving car is a step from a car, but not as big as a car was from a horse. And so you can sort of debate quite how big these things are and how, how to quantify them again. But, uh, but th- that was still the narrative that was very intact in 2014. And uh, when you fast forward to 2019, it's striking how there's absolutely no narrative of the future left. Google doesn't even talk about the self-driving car very much. There's a sense that it may still happen, but it's further in the future. The, to- the expected time seems to be getting further away uh, every passing year. It's the expected time is getting even further into the future. And, um, and so there's sort of the sense that uh, perhaps there's this danger that we have um, slowed progress um, um, even in tech, even in the world of information technology. Uh, one of the, you know, one of, parenthetically, one of the ways this t- uh, stagnation thesis sort of was embedded in the language is the word technology, of course, had a very different meaning. And in the, in the 1960s, technology meant not just computers, but also rockets and supersonic aviation and underwater cities and the green revolution in agriculture and biotechnology and new medicines and all these things, because all these things were progressing on many fronts. And today, uh, if you use the word technology, it is often synonymous with um, with information technology and and probably just the uh, software internet part of that because that's the only part that has been moving um, that has been progressing in recent decades. And the the danger is that even that has slowed down um, um, a lot. That uh, somehow Silicon Valley is consolidated into some larger companies. It's it's gotten harder for new companies to break through, and it's gotten harder because new companies are small companies are good at doing new things, and people are doing fewer new things than um, than the big companies are are more dominant. And so um, so I think the second uh, you know uh, a cut on the uh, life after Google book in in these terms is um, is always what I think is the sort of um, you know uh, Gilder's always super optimistic, but there is like a, a small undercurrent of pessimism to the book. And the undercurrent is, you know, the specter that haunts life after Google is that maybe this current regime is going to go on for a really long time. And, you know, you know, we're, you know, there was life after television, but, uh, but life after Google may take, uh, you know, it will happen eventually, but it may take uh, a little bit longer and that we're, you know, that there is a danger that we're in this somewhat slowed, somewhat stagnant world. So, uh, so that's sort of a, Second um, idea that we, I think we need to always um, grapple with a lot that maybe we're in this in this world of a uh, tech stagnation. Third um, contrarian idea I will give you is sort of a qualif- qualification on my first two ideas um, uh, because I think you know the first one was it's, it's about um, pendulum's going to swing back to uh, to decentralization. Second one is yes, it's swing back, but it's just going to be slow because everything is slowed and we're in this in this world of stagnation. But a, a qualifier to both the um, back to decentralization and the stagnation idea is that, um, you know, at the end of the day, technology is about people. It's not about, um, you know, inanimate forces. It's not some kind of Marxist historicism about, you know, the way things are inevitably going to happen. And so the stress is always on um, on individuals, small teams that start companies, that start new projects, that that do new things. And, um, and, um, it's a question of human agency. It's not deterministic. We have every possibility to do these things, but at the end of the day, it is up to us to make it happen. And it's, uh, it's not set in stone that it's going to happen one way or another. And so, uh, you know, in conclusion, I think, you know, sort of one other, one other gloss on life after Google is that perhaps you should think of the title, uh, as, you know, with life being, italicized or stressed or put in bold and that uh you know the the critical thing is you know there is life life goes on and uh in particular human life uh humanity goes on and uh and that uh that uh, even though the dominant narrative is the tech is about inanimate forces or marxist historicism um it really is at its core about human beings and we should uh, we should always um, we, you know, if we have to bet on it, we should always bet on the indomitability of the human spirit.